a day in the life of cleaning up Australia. And I don't mind cleaning up, it's just there's always been a foul stench attached to it. And um, there's neglect based around it, but I think what it is, is like, to clean up Australia, what are we really cleaning up? Because it's a horrible stench, built by pride. It's the stench of hypocrisy. And it's the great saboteur. And how often have you come across this? I mean, for the last decade, I have come across one thing after the next, where, um, and I don't know if it's people on their ass that just don't have the skills to do it and it's been done. But, like, it's like we'll be a skill shortage, but the hypocrite kind of says, this is no good, let's sell it to get the money so we can do something else. But the one thing the hypocrite never actually does is maintenance. They don't look after anything. They expect that things are just going to run like a robot and work forever. And that, um, you know, like, how often do you come across someone that'll run their car to the ground and, you know, spew all the oil out of it all over the ground? And then you've got a situation where um, then it's got to go to the mechanics. But, like, look, it wasn't their fault that... Um, oil spewed out everywhere but also at the same time they'll try to tell you that it's the car's fault that it lost the oil but um at what point did they do the oil change or what point did they look after the maintenance so maintenance is a major issue and i kind of feel like probably one of the biggest issues with australia today is um the hypocrisy especially on a state and national level, where, you know, it's always about let's develop more, let's develop more, let's go to new innovations. And it's like, but how about you look after what you've got? Maintenance is pretty damn important and it's not hard to change oil or something so that it keeps running properly. Um, you know, this here is an absolute, it's an atrocity what happened. And, you know, my compassion is just like, this land deserves better because there's nothing wrong with this land. And, um, you know, it's how we find employment, it's how we find work, you know, fixing problems. Uh, but this, just like so many others, um, is based upon going, oh, we run it to the ground, deliberately doing it, so sabotaging it, and say that it's useless. Well, then it means that we'll be able to do something like, you know, start destroying this beautiful Australian native scenery and um, put houses there because obviously you know housing's important especially when we live in a country that can't even afford to keep the people in the houses in the first place so we better build more houses so that we can go into a greater depth because we've got to keep this great illusion going that things are okay well they're not really okay i mean things are fantastic on one level where if we really decided to um look after what it is that we have, we would recognise that there is a lot of opportunity out there. But the opportunity at the moment is consumerism. It's a case of just out the old in with the new, throw out the trash. It's all redundant. Redundancy is a terrible thing, and collectively speaking, a lot of people are feeling redundant right now. But if we were to pull up, take a look at what it is that we have, and recognise that, you know, two steps backwards, actually fix what it is we've got, we may recognise that we had everything that we needed to be able to create something different again, which is even greater than what it is we've got, which is stop just buying things and using them to death, and once they're used, throw them in the bin. Humans, vehicles, land, houses, businesses, etc., is what am I trying to get at here? Like, um, the greatest susceptibility to why we are sitting at where we're at right now is just um, neglect. But the hypocrisy of the neglect, because typically the ones that are doing the neglect um, won't even try in the first place to try and fix things. Um, just sweep it under the rug. It'll get better. No, no, you, you've got to look after what you've got. You know, this is why we have so many bloody possessions, because no one looks after their belongings. So, yeah, a little bit in all of this.
but you know, steady as she goes, there could be a really bright potential future for this nation. But we've got to get beyond this consumerism where we just buy shit, run it into the ground, and just buy more shit and run it into the ground. We need to recognise that you know there is quality in what we have and look after what we've got and allow it to see the lifespan that it needs to see because if we can do that, there's just, you know, um, oh, nothing but beautiful things that will come out of it. Uh, there'll be a major economic shift in thinking, but it would allow for more money with employment for a service-based business instead of thinking that manufacturing is the key, where obviously we've lost a lot of it because it went overseas. But if we had quality goods, I mean, look at this stuff. Built back in the 70s, came from the Ord River. Still as good now as what it was, what, 40 years ago? Look after what we have. I'll fix those up and they'll still be working. Um, I kind of feel like this country is a service-based country and the service that we can provide can service ourselves, but also service the rest of the world. I am doing a bit of an experiment at the moment. I've got a business program that I'm happily handing out that will teach people how to think like a CEO. It's worth thousands. And in the right hands, once someone gets their hands on their head around it, it will earn them whatever it is that it wants to earn them, it will give them whatever life it is that they choose to live. The reason why I'm doing it is I just want to prove to people that good things are out there and there are beautiful gifts available and it's the actual consciousness which is the issue where even when a great opportunity that is worth profound amounts is handed to someone, they don't want it because who wants change? And this is the great issue that we've got. Everyone wants change but no one wants to change and if we don't pick our act up and if we don't start to be a little bit more responsible and recognize that this neglectful act of hypocrisy that people like myself find ourselves walking into one year after the next and going through the heartache of cleaning the things up, I mean, we find some pretty cool deep spiritual knowledge from it and it actually helps us become better people. Nonetheless, this is a shared experiment where we all need to start looking further afield beyond this whole indoctrinated truth of nine to five thinking and we need to start thinking about how could I co-create a better existence but with that it comes down to the age of um, we must take responsibility for our own actions and um, you know stop this blame game and get better at what choices we make and you know if something isn't broke well, you know saying if it ain't broke don't fix it no if it's not broke look after it and if we could do that, there could be something very magical that comes from that. I mean, look at this beautiful land here. You know, if we break this, then we can break this land, break these trees, and um, put houses in it and get rid of, you know, native habitats, homes. We can't do this anymore. This is the problem with this hypocr hypocritic government. It just keeps making things obsolete to destroy them and put new things in where they won't look after what's already there because they've got this agenda, which is, you know, complete consumerism turned into communism where they'll starve the people out, have a few at the top, but take in all the kitty and, um, you know, leave a situation where you have codependent adult children that can't think for themselves on their own two feet. It's time that we start to stand on our own two feet and think for ourselves and be responsible for nature, be responsible for the land, but be responsible for the things that we were gifted and look after them. God will give us, but also taketh away. We must have gratitude. I hope there were some words in this of, you know, relevant goodness to anyone that's listening. And, you know, let's all keep up the good fight. Have a good day.